Yes folks, I'm back from an incredible fishing trip in a 17 foot Wilson flyer, the thresher with Wayne Combo. And we're gonna be cooking something we call. We had four conger to 35 pounds. Actually, I didn't, Wayne did, but I kept out the Tony Wilson corner by catching two cod. We had cod of two 10 pound cod. This is one that's still in the bucket of ice. There we go, guys. That is what a proper English cod looks like. Wait for this. This is only a 10 pluser. We had a 15 12, a 16 2, thong back ray, undulate ray, which we put back, bass, which we put back. And I'm going to fill it, this cod ready. Let me show you how we're going to do it because this is about the best eating fish, or one of them, that you can get in the Atlantic Ocean. Add one knife. Now listen, I'm sure the wife's nice, nice granite worktop's not even handy for this, but she's watching TV in the other room, so yeah, that's a good fish. Put ice in the bucket in there. I'm gonna have a go at filleting this fish for you. So, I haven't bothered gutting it. I'm gonna take a cut along the back here. Along the door, so I'm going to come around the side here, round below the petrol fins, back up here, all the way along it, and then we're going to get around to hopefully cooking it. Let's get started. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a fishmonger, I'm not going to say I'm the best filleter. I'm trying to do the best I can, but if you just gently stroke the knife along the back of these bones here, let's just go round the corner there. Gradually easing the meat away from what is basically the bones. I hate bones in fish, absolutely a bore bones in fish. It spoils good eating fish. Why they're fish I've got bones in them, I do not know. You can look at this meat that's coming off. Man alive. No wonder people like cod fishing. There we go. Of course, professionals do this in seconds. I'm not a professional, I'm just an ordinary guy that likes eating fish like cod. Now, I'm told if you freeze these, it's what Wayne said, freeze them, leaving the skin on it, it just protects the meat a little bit more. Let's get these two fillets off, wash them down, and show them to you. Okay, here's a piece of fillet. Now, there's the skin on one side, there's all that lovely meat on the other. I'm going to cut it in half here, and what I'm going to do is try and take that back skin off by just keeping the knife very flat to the board, holding the back piece of meat, and just gradually, slowly sliding this knife along that skin like that. Just work it slowly. You need a quite, I find quite a broad knife works well. Listen, I'm no fishmonger, what do I know? To me, fish is protein, food, something to eat, something to keep you alive. Watch your fingers with sharp knives, but I'll show you what happens. That's what happens. There's the skin, loose, useless. There's a lovely chunk of meat there. I'm going to turn it around now. I've no idea whether you should do it one way or the other, but I'm going to work, holding the skin, work that knife slowly backwards and forwards. Quite sad when you see our most average fishermen muller and completely ruin fillets of fish because we don't know what we're doing. Look, we don't know what we're doing. I'm not pretending to be an expert. I'm just a guy that goes and catches some fish and if I want to eat them, I'll eat them. If I want to put them back, I'll put them back. I've done the best I can. There. That's my two pieces of meat. That's my wastage. The other pieces I'm going to cut in half. The other piece here, look, another huge fillet. I'm going to whack that in half. That's a lot of fish for two people, I can assure you. Like that. And then I'm going to leave the skin. Now Wayne told me this, he said leave the skin. These two I'm going to eat, look. They're going to be eaten fresh tomorrow. We're going to have those tea tomorrow. Beautiful, beautiful pieces of cod. So I'm going to fridge those, leave them as they are. These I want to freeze down for another meal, so that's two meals out of one fish. Bear in mind we caught four up to 16 pounds, I think. I'm going to pat, just pad them off with a piece of dry paper toweling, just like this. Dab all that excess moisture off. 
fact, what I should have done really, when I think about it, is put the paper down first, shouldn't I? I've done it that way. Listen, the whole life is a learning curve. Dab as much moisture off it as you can get. I can take the skin off of these here when I thaw them out next time I use them, but apparently Wayne says the skin here is helping to protect the meat from freezer burn. But there we go, dab those off. Now what I'm going to do is keep all the air out. Again, a tip from Wayne who is a really good cook, and that is either Ziploc bag them, or I'm going to use a piece of cling fill. I love cling fill. Don't you love it when you lose the ends? It drives you absolutely mad. A piece of cling film like this, but get as much air out of that as you can. That is apparently the way to really preserve your fish frozen. Get all the air out of it. So I'm going to use two pieces of cling film. Of course you could use a Ziploc bag, no problem at all. But this is the way I'm doing it. So that's a meal for me and my wife tomorrow night, which we're going to cook. And two pieces of lovely meat. And I've got some bonus pieces. Let me just show you. Extra pieces of meat here. I'm going to dab those off, freeze those down as well. And then when people come around, Mike comes around with his girlfriend. Then his fiance, I should say. He comes around with his fiance, Emmy. They can have a taste. In fact, I'm going to cut that one in half two pieces, what I call taster sizes, pieces of cod fillets. I'll put those on because I know they're coming out tomorrow night. So there's two pieces for me and some taster pieces of prime Atlantic English Channel cod for tomorrow evening. I think the only thing to do now is get some sleep because I've been, I've been up and driving since 5.30 this morning. It's now 25 to 10 at night. We've got a lot of fish but the adrenaline is finally starting to subside. I need some sleep. Okay, so here, I've got my cod fillets have been nestling overnight in the bottom of the fridge near the ragworm bait for tomorrow night's fishing. All we're gonna do, dead basic, dead simple. This is just cod fillets. Well, I say fillets, but be the old bone in there with my fillet in. Salt, pepper, I'll put some on there. Lemon juice, I will add later to taste. With that, I'm going to have some small uh, new potatoes. I've got some British petty pot, not foreign stuff. It's none of their foreign rubbish, you know. British peas here, there. Now those you can microwave by adding, this one's dead easy, some water. That is three quarters of a mug. And what my mum used to do was put just a level teaspoonful of sugar in there. I can remember doing this many times with a lot of small peas, not just these small penny poire, which is just the bigger peas as well. So that's in obviously like a Pyrex dish, into the microwave, five minutes. We're going to make a sauce mix. More to go with the potatoes and a little bit with the fish. Don't want to kill it off because you want the taste of the fish. So this one is partially in chive sauce. In goes the packet. And I add to that, start mixing ground bait for fishing. It says half a pint of milk. For two people, half a pint, I feel, is a lot of sauce. But I'm going to mix all this up. And this, again, could be microwaved. Five minutes, dead easy. Make use of the microwave. You can heat it in a saucepan as well. Bring it to the bar, then go back down to simmer. I'm mixing it all up, and then I'm adding the extra milk I want. So it's more for a little bit extra. Any chefy people that are really into their cooking, please don't email or nor send comments because I'm really not interested. I'm just cooking to enjoy to eat. That's all it's about for me. Dead easy. Just put a little bit more in there. Now, obviously, milk based, when you are putting it in the microwave, just basically keep it on it. You have to stir it. Say so you have five minutes, check it on two minutes in case it boils over. The milk does boil very fast. Okay, in the frying pan. Wayne told me this and he is a specialist cook. I mean he really knocked you dead some of his fish cooking. A little bit of butter and a little bit of oil. Mix the two together. That's what he told me. I was fishing with him yesterday. Let's get this heated up because this is really easy to do. I've already, already over the back there got my small potatoes, new potatoes on the boil there. And what I do to test those, dip the fork in. If they slip off the fork, you know they're cooked. Let's get the old frying pan going. Yeah, fish. It doesn't take long to cook, does it? Fish. That's the thing. 
But here we've got a couple of big old chunks, so that was a big cod. So I'm guessing, Wayne was saying about three minutes each side, I reckon it might be four minutes, because that's quite, quite uh, chunky there. And he said to watch the edges for when it goes white. This is what he told me. Put the, and he's a specialist cod fisherman and a specialist cod cook, fish cook of all descriptions. Put the fish in, do not touch it, cook it. Get the spatula, turn it over, do not touch it, cook it. It will fall apart otherwise. See how we go with it. Anything can happen on a totally awesome fishing kitchen. Let's check those potatoes. They are pretty well, let's just test those. A little bit longer, they don't quite slide off the top there. This is now too hot. Let's turn that down a bit. I believe that's the butter rather than the oil. There we go. Now, six minutes, I'm going to put the peas in the microwave and hit them with five. How do we do it? Put them in once, and Wayne said, leave them. They've got off cuts here, what I call off cuts, spares. The daughter's going to be in later on, and she'll want to try a sample of this. Now, we've got them in. Okay, what you can do is put one of these lids over the top. It stops any spitting anywhere. The wife's going to love this, it's spitting all over the edge already. I have to clean that up before she sees what I'm doing. Well, she's going to eat it. If it tastes all right, I'll do all right. Be safe. We'll go fishing again. But the lid helps keep, I feel, the moisture in the fish a bit more. But I've got the extract to go as well. It is a fishy smell when you cook fish. It does smell of fish. This one smells absolutely beautiful. And it's cooking away here, so I'm watching it as Wayne said, watching for the edges to go white. And on those smaller chunks, small cubic bits, you can actually see it starting to turn. Now I'm just going to turn this off for a second, but maybe can you see the edge of this going white now, where the fish is cooking, just around the edges? Losing the colour, because that's thinner. But the bigger chunk, it's still got a bit of red in it, and I'm going to turn that over after four minutes. Not touch it, as Wayne said, because these are thick steaks, thick cod steak. Let those cook by that. And he said, don't be jiggling the pan and playing around with it, just leave it as it is, and hopefully all will be revealed in the shape of some nice cod fillets. Now, yeah, while I've got the uh, parsley and chive sauce going as well, you can see the moisture droplets on here around the pan and that's why I think it keeps a lot of flavour in there, a lot of moisture in there and the red colour, let me just lift that, has now come out of that. Can you see? The red's come out of it, it's starting to go white. I reckon another minute or so and I'll get ready to turn it. Just let that one finish off there. Got a little glass of bubbly as a solo chef we will do. Mm. Joking apart, you can do beer batter cod. I've never done it, Wayne has. I'll either get the recipe from him or I'll pop down the other cod fillets I've got in the freezer and get him to do it for us. And I'll tell you what, it is beautiful apparently. Let's get that fish out. Now the peas are done there. Just leave them in the hot water till I'm ready for them. These are warm, we're going to strain them off. Let's get the fish on here, and I've got about 30 seconds left on that uh, sauce. Potatoes, obviously, pretty well look after themselves, they're switching off. There we go, guys. That is beautiful white flakes, which is traditional with a cod. And I'll tell you what, I bet it tastes pretty good as well. If it doesn't, well, I'll give up fishing. No, that's not happening. It's absolutely falling apart. My big thing is, like a lot of fishermen, all you guys out there, is, oh my God, filleting. So I'm going to go through this very carefully to make sure, i give the wife some, uh, of the bone. So I'm not going to gollop it down quickly, but obviously somebody who can do it properly, fill it, makes life a lot easier. You just cook that fillet 
Oh God, there's a lot of fish here. <laughs> oh, the wife that is cold. That's it. Just watch when you have microwaveable uh, stuff like you're cooking in the microwave like this. Don't forget, it's still hot. It is still, you tend to think, well, oh, it just cooks it. No, no, it, it, it is hot. It is hot. A lot of fish here. How those proper chefs in hotels get it all timed at the same time is beyond me. Then we just got the sauce to go on the top. I never mind cooking a lot of potatoes because I quite like them cold, you know, can have them in a salad. Part of the fun of cooking. I don't plaster it all over like you would ketchup. I don't put it next to the peas. I put it over to the side here. So it's parsley and chives there. And then obviously people can take what they want. If you put it next to the peas, sticks all the peas together, it doesn't look quite so decorative. But this one, to me, looks like it should get the full seal of approval. And there you have it. Cod, caught yesterday, eaten today. The totally awesome fishing style.